Hi, and welcome to Sunday Segway, coming to you straight out of the UK, and boy, what a show we have for you tonight. Let's get things started. Tonight's, tonight's contest, contest will be a triple, triple threat, threat match. match. Introducing first, coming to you live from Newport, Wales, weighing 161 pounds, the technical and sound engineer, Sugar, the Gallum Sugar, Shoo. Next up, we have a man, Bristol born and bred, with countless hours of ring experience, weighing in at 175 pounds, our resident wrestler, the human highlight reel, E2J! And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour, the no Twitter fan coming to you straight out of Bristol, England, weighing in at 168 pounds, your host, Kenny Killer! Yo, Drake. <laughs> All right, welcome everyone to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. I feel a little bit gassed right now. I feel a little bit, you know, a little bit hyped up. Um, you know, Zach, it's that weekend, it's the Sunday segue, it's episode 7, I am the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour, the one man no Twitter fan, Kenny Killer, and you know I am always kicking it with the Gaudem Sugar Shooks. Yo! <laughs> and also, don't ever forget, don't you ever forget the human highlight reel himself, Mr. E2J. Uh, hey, yo, what's up? <laughs> It sounds like I'm a DJ in a little DJ intro there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's it going, guys? It's a bit of an emotional weekend, you know. The man himself, the father himself, Mr. Alex Ferguson, Sir Alex, is retiring. Last home game. I feel a little bit sad. I'm going to drop a little tears later. Um, and I'm not ashamed to say it. Uh, well, I, I don't watch football, but I'm going to have to check it out. I think... I've watched it for years. I think I might, you know, I might even pour some liquor, you know, for the <laughs> rest in peace, Fergie, you know. He's not dying, but he's stepping down. I might have to pour a little famous grace for my homeboy, um, yeah. you know, just mm -hmm. just maybe shed a tear. I think yeah, I might man. actually pour, you know, just one little tear. I might yeah, pretend man. I got something in my eye. <laughs> yeah, you've got to show the, you know, you've got to show the strength in it for the Fergie. You've got to make sure that we're there for him, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's, that's footy. We're rolling on to wrestling what is called Monday Night Raw, and a little bit of SmackDown sprinkled in. You know how it is. Um, all right, so let me just get off the bat. Follow us on Twitter. You know, there's the at Sunday Segue. Uh, the Segue is spelled S-E-G-U-E. -E. Um, read our blog, um, sundaysegway.blogspot.co.uk. Also listen to our old episodes on YouTube, on iTunes, Pod Podomatic, and the favorite Double Twist player. Also, you can email us. That's uh, sundaysegway at gmail.com. Okay, so people, let's head into the deadly dirt sheet. So, Jerry Lawler returns to the ring. Now, it seems like Jerry Lawler is going to be wrestling on Dory Funk Jr.'s uh, little promotion. Um, There's bad TV, uh, and it looks like that Jerry Lawler is a fool because the guy has had a heart attack, and he looks like he's going to step in the ring and maybe potentially have another one. Uh, guys, what the hell? Uh, you got you just got to let him do it. Unfortunately, he's one of those guys that is just like a lot of wrestlers. I mean, some of them don't get the chance to obviously just to carry, they don't go on long enough to actually have the accident in the ring. I mean, yeah. with some obviously some of the early deaths and stuff that we've seen over the years. But Lawler's pushing it. Like someone needs to just they. I don't want to see him off WWE TV, but they need to say, look, if you're going to be wrestling, then. Because the, the worst thing I'd I'd hate, do you know what I mean, is to, to hear, oh, yeah, well, he died over the weekend or something in ring. Mm -hmm. I know he loves it, but come on, he, he needs to he needs to be smart about it now as well. He ain't Superman. <laughs> Leave that to see, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely telling him something. His heart's telling him something, isn't it? Jeez. Um, the next story, Paul Bear will be inducted. Well, he'll be the first inductee into the Hall of Fame uh, 2014 at WrestleMania 30. Um, Shugs, it's about time, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think it'll be good. Obviously, him passing away is probably 
um, pushed it quicker than it would have normally been. It might have been in a couple of years, or he might have went in like maybe the same time as the Undertaker or something like that. But mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's you know um, it's when somebody dies, then you realise the, like how much they did, how much they mean to like the business, and I think it'd be good. But it's just will the under I think the Undertaker needs to do it, the intro um, or Kane if they don't want to break kayfabe. Because Kane's yeah. been so many different characters that it'll be <laughs> fine for him to do it. But they were on a bit like Michael Hayes doing it, and I just think that'll be that that'll just be, that'll just, that'll be whack. Yeah. Yeah, take her Kane. Yeah. It needs to be take her Kane. Yeah. Even if they have, sorry, carry on. Yeah, yeah. Because like if Kate, if Taker comes out, you know, he, I think he could still do it as the Undertaker, and mm-hmm. you know, just give a little intro, talk about him, and you know, that'll be fine. Well, we we've heard him talk as the American badass, so I th- like, I, I think they can, I think they can like let him off for that night, but it just depends what they want to go with. I think for me, it needs to be Taker, to be honest. Yeah, it needs to be Taker. Whether they do like a video package and he's not there live, and they just do a video package or something, I don't know. But you know, something like through satellite, just something. He needs to be there. He needs to do it. Build in a know. coffin. Oh, in the casket, oh, old school style, you know? 1992. Oh, don't even get me started. The funeral parlour. Jeez. Um, right, next on the deadly dirt sheet, the end of Saturday morning slam. It is the end, guys. They said they only signed up for a season, which is obviously up until May in America. So it looks like at the end of May, it's going to be the end of Saturday morning slam. Um, I mean, I don't watch it. Um, do you watch it, E2J? Nah, I didn't even know it was the end of Saturday morning slam, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the um, end. Yeah, um, like, I only listen because um they review it on a smart wrestling fan, so they always yeah. talk about Saturday morning slam, but I've never seen an episode. So, you know, it it's not really going to make any difference to like my um wrestling week. Exactly. There you go. Uh the final news of the week is Mr. Big Ziggler himself suffered a concussion at the last Smackdown taping. Um, it looked like, from what I saw on SmackDown, um, it, I think he took a, a, a horrible kick by Del Rio. It looked like it, but I don't know whether that is what it was. But um, uh, I, think, I think the kick was the first kick. It's like the very first kick of the match from mm. um, Swagger. Swagger. Because if you if you watch the match, obviously I watched it for um, SmackDown in sixty seconds. But if mm. you look at the match, he wasn't right all the way through. And it was that mm. first kick when Ziggler bends down as if he's going to pick up the ladder. And yeah. then um, Swagger just kicks him. And it's like he kicks him straight on top of the head. Like, almost like a stamp down on the head. And it just mm-hmm. looked like that just scrambled him from the beginning. You know, he did well to even have any action after that. Yeah. I mean, ain't they meant to... Obviously, the safety move... We all come on, we all know wrestling's fake, but... Ain't the safety move meant to be kicks them in the shoulder and not in the head, like, you know? It's, yeah, it's... but I think because Ziggler actually wasn't knocked out, obviously you don't have to be knocked out to have a concussion. Um, yeah. He got up and he carried on with the match, so they didn't, like, throw up an X or, you know, anything happened. And it's a bit like with Lesnar and Triple H in yeah. um, WrestleMania. No one even knew he was knocked out. Triple H covered for him, and then, you know, he got his composure back and did the whole match. Yeah, dude, fair enough, fair enough. He's he's got bottle, man. This guy, you know, they, you gotta be tough to be a wrestler. So, well, yeah, yeah, you he, gotta be, you gotta be ready, aren't you, man? But took it one take. Yeah, they said he's got to do more um, impact tests. But you know, if for all these sports like football, basketball, American football, all those, if you have a concussion, then that means you know you're you're off the on the shelf for minimum of thirty days. You know, if you get a diagnosed with concussion, that is a minimum of thirty days non-contact resting as well you know Jeez, so well, no no traveling no flying just rest well hopefully that don't affect you know extreme rules it might do it might not well oh. i mean if it, if it i mean if it goes by their horrible booking you know it means they won't have any idea how to make this you know how to pull the software it looks kind of okay you know so we're just gonna have to watch this space and see what happens tomorrow on raw wherever they mention something but, um, yeah, that's the end of the Deadly Dirt Sheet. And let's move straight into Raw. So Raw began with a, video, a little video footage of um, Lesnar Heyman walking into 
you know, uh, Stamford, Connecticut, the WWE headquarters. Now, this is how you start Raw, man. Like, you know, you, n- nothing else but some outside stuff. I mean, when I saw the pictures of the guy walking into the Stamford, Connecticut, I was like, well, hey, what's going on? We, they ain't done nothing like this for weeks, have they, Shooks? Like, nah, you know, nah, for I thought- years. I thought it was good, and like I think obviously this has got to be um, a Paul Heyman idea, you know, to invade the HQ of WWE, and you know the like the video surveillance footage and the way the, um, they shot it and the way they were building up to it through the show. I thought it was a good way to start. It's got to be better than you know the some of the other things they come or this voiceover movie trailer guy who comes oh. on at the beginning. But yeah, I thought it was good. Yeah, um, then obviously Raw started and Cena came out and stunk the joint out. E2J, what is WWE thinking starting out on a high with this Lesnar thing and then flopping straight after with Cena coming out and doing a dumbass jokes? I don't know, man. It's, they must have had loads of kids in the crowd. Like The crowd seemed, seemed like quite live for Cena, like pro Cena. A little bit. Like, mm. I think, like, management must have been happy. That's why they must have put him out there. It's like, now's our chance. Look, we'll get seen over. Like, like he's still, people still like him. But, I mean, like, obviously the kids like him, that sort of thing. But, yeah, throwing him out there after that, like you said, the opening with Lesnar, that was classic old school. I like the whole invasion takeover angles, like, against the authority figure, which is obviously Triple H. Um, mm. But, to, yeah, to put it into Cena, like, I think he get, I think Cena goes on a bit. You need to just wrap his stuff up quick, get get to the point. Um I like Ryback's promo. Um I don't think he's too bad. It just for me this bit's just like, okay, now I'm gonna wait till next week to see the see the same thing again with a little bit more added on, like a little like piece of the puzzle each week until we get to it. I mean yeah, it's it's one of those things like I want to like it I do want to like it I like how Ryback's cutting promos and how he talks the whole Ryback rules thing mm-hmm. but yeah it just needs a bit more to it, it just needs something like edgy just these these Cena promos at the beginning of the rule I'm just yeah I'm sick of that yeah. um Shooks um like our WWE do you reckon WWE's taking a risk um booking Cena injured um with all these other stars you know what I mean either taking a break or out injured or do you reckon the injuries are work um, well, I don't think it's a complete work. There might be some type of, um, I don't know how severe the injury is, but I just think that they're always going to book Cena. You know, um, they're not going to take him out of the title picture after putting the strap on him at WrestleMania. So mm-hmm. unless he gets injured and can't wrestle, then they're just going to put him in there because he's not the type who's going to say, "Ah, oh, I'm not good to go, or I need a rest, or I need a break." He's going to go in there, on, you know what scene it's like, he's going to go in on one leg. You know? Yeah. And as, uh, as far yeah. as his promo goes, I just think that, you know, with him doing the Ryback impression, I know it's funny, but it's almost as if he was like burying Ryback, you know, before yeah. the match even started. I don't think it came off well on Ryback Cena's promo. I think it was a bit too much. It's not like he's going up against The Rock and The Rock's going to come back with something. This is Ryback, mm-hmm. you know, and I thought... The Ryback impression, it did make me laugh, but I thought it was, I thought it was, you know, burying really, burying Ryback before they've even started. I don't expect Ryback to win. No, right. I mean, I don't. Two weeks ago, I don't expect him to win. Yeah, I mean, it's it's already bad enough that like with Ryback and the reactions, like, is he getting the reactions needed to get over as a heel? Should? I don't think so. I think they're trying to build him more as a heel by making him to do more traditional or even old school heel things, walking away from matches, refusing to make him look like a coward. But mm-hmm. and even more on SmackDown when I get into uh, the SmackDown review, even more on there. But I think they're booking him quite well because they're putting him in the ring with good wrestlers. Uh, yeah. He fought obviously uh, Daniel Bryan, and then on uh, SmackDown he fought Chris Jericho. So they put them in with people, and obviously his best match was the one against CM Punk. And I think, and obviously Kane as well, they put him in. So they're putting him in the ring with the right people to make him look better. But then, is his match with Cena going to look any good? <laughs> Not if Cena's calling it. We um, can hope. Yeah, we can hope. Uh, okay, segment two, we saw Orton versus Damien Sandow. Now, before I get into it, just a little mini rant about the match. Shugs. How good was the Sandow song? But this is it. Like, this is classic Sandow, as Michael Cole would say. 
You know, he come out and he's, he's always great when he's got a mic in his hand. He should come out, his music should play, cut it off and let him say something about whoever he's fighting every single week because that's how he's got over as a heel by um, his work on the mic. Yeah, it's, he's class. He's class in ETJ. That was a, uh, the in-ring wrestling as well. You can't knock it. That was the, that was a good start in-ring got it going on obviously coming out doing that Th- these guys are obviously playing on the wrestling memes and everything like on the internet as well about uh voices in his head and like sending everyone to sleep it's, it's just too good and yeah they put it on in the ring as well they they pulled it off both of them i mean yeah orton is that they played on it um and it worked sandow is just too good uh, the only thing that bugged me about this match was the fact that we already saw this match last week on SmackDown, yeah, and Randy yeah. Orton won, like, clean. No problems. He won clean. So why are we seeing this match again? And then we had the ending, the dumb ending. Like, what happened with the cameraman? Like, what yeah. happened with the cameraman? And, uh, <laughs> were, were we ever supposed to see it? Or, you know, was it just supposed to be a spot for Michael Cole to be like, oh, my God, oh, my God. But, it's... um... Yeah, yeah, I don't want to go into cameras because WWE, I think they overdo it with cameras sometimes and then they forget actually what they're doing. Like they've got TV show guys in the back. But they just need to get, like, wrestling angles. Keep it not too basic, but, yeah, you, you ended up missing it and you're like, well, what did he do? And then, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, well, segment three, we saw uh, it was a Fandango, Jericho angle. Um, our truth was flung in there as well. Um, Jericho with his normal, you know, his normal stick, you know, his normal, um, yeah, you know, Y2J, Jericho Halix, blah, blah, blah. Um, you have Naomi and Cameron shaking their booty, and you pick Sweet T and King Hippo from Mike Tyson Punch Out to do the bloody. Um, marking like what's that all about you've got these two dancers they're proper dancing and you've got these two big guys who can't even dance giving the marking on trying to tell me how good Fandango's meant to be dancing what kind of rubbish is that seriously um, <laughs> and to tell you what Shooks, thank god Samurai wasn't there <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, know um, I mean? you know I think they um, must have had enough negative feedback about Samurai's dancing um, to bring back the best dancer out of the lot, you know, because the, the, I think they work well. The other dancer and Fandango seem to have a better chemistry. They've been coming out, and she's there. She doesn't speak, and she's got this look on her face, you know, and she just she just goes through it. She seems more graceful. She seems like she's a actual proper dancer. And Summer yeah. Ray just looks like some skep they just dragged in <laughs> to just do these moves. You know? <laughs> oh, I mean, on the, on the dirt sheets, anyway, it says that this girl is a, is a student. Um, and the only reason Summer Rae is been doing it is because she's been in college or at uni. So when she's not at uni, she will be doing it. But when she is, Summer Rae will be drafted in. And I will not be turning off for that. <laughs> um, but, I mean, what can I say? Summer Rae's doing good stuff in NXT. Keep her there, please, because she's doing sick stuff in NXT. E2J, um... Are WWE holding off Fandango's push on purpose? It could be, it could be a slow build. Um, I like what they're doing at the moment. Obviously, back to the dancer, I think with his character, you need to keep it as authentic as possible. So getting a stand-in that can't pull off the moves, you need, a, you, need the, you need the girl that can move, that can do everything professionally and properly. Um, as for the build, like, I'll... I want to. I hope it's a slow build because I want to know where this one goes. I hope there's a lot more between Fandango and Jericho because they they can pull off good matches in the ring. I'm confident they can do that. I think they can have a good little uh, rivalry. And you need a slow you need a slow build with Fandango. I think anyway, just because you don't you don't want to just show everything that the guy's got straight off the bat. You want him to be winding people up, obviously. No, uh, not not wanting to wrestle, doing that kind of thing. That that's what makes a good heel. Um, and then obviously the big events will be when obviously he gets caught in the ring and look, he's he's got. A, there's no way getting out of it then. Do you know what I mean? He's locked in. He's got he's got to have mm-hmm. the match. Uh, so yeah, I don't I don't mind seeing like obviously what happened on Raw with Fandango and Jericho. Yeah, I get it. Um, I just hope that they are building him slow and uh, 
I think it's going to work that way. And I'm just looking forward to seeing what they got with him, man. Can't not like Fandango. Yeah, no, you can't knock him. I mean, you know, we, we love him out here in good old podcast land. Um, segment four was Del Rio versus Ziggler again. Um, Ricardo is more over than Del Rio, okay? Because <laughs> as soon as um, they saw Ricardo, all you heard was, was a pop. He got a nice pop. And, you know, he plays along with the crowd. The crowd play along with him. They do the, the Del Rio long name. And then as soon as Del Rio steps out, silence. Tumbleweed. Nothing at all. Um, but regardless of that, um, Shugs, did you like the match? Yeah, um, I, I think Del Rio's a good wrestler. And obviously, you know, we all like um, Ziggler. Uh, but I think it's just a case of people are not, they're just not having Del Rio as a face, you know, I thought he was a good heel, he used to come out with the different cars, you know, speak down to people, be the classic foreign heel, but as a face, he's not working, and they're just, they're like flogging a dead horse, you know, <laughs> that's what they're yeah. doing. They're going to make you like it, that's the way they do it. Yeah, they're going to force it down their throats. But yeah, I thought yeah. it was a good match, especially, I think the the winner in this match was Swagger, because when he came out and gave the beat down with the ladder, then it just it made him look like you know they're like he's the one who's in like pole position to to win the ladder match. Yeah, that was nice. That was nice for Swagger. I think like you know that was nice for his for his character to make him look aggressive because standing behind Zeb Coulter, you know, there's only so much you can do. But they actually made him come out. You know, st- he stood in front of Biggie Lance and said, "Move, man." Sat down. You know. Fair enough, man got dashed into him and he got up and he took it out on them. Uh, you know, he took it out on them. Man got the ladder. Z- all right, Ziggler, I swear down, this guy needs to just, he bumps, but I think he bumps too much because he is taking some links. Did, like, did, um, E2J, he took a shot in the face with the ladder, like, real hard. And I reckon, I don't think he, he was meant to be hit with that side of the ladder because he didn't look like he anticipated it properly. I think he just, the, the guy just sell, he just, I don't know. He's going to be mashed up in a couple of years bad, I think. Um, obviously, like, he's suffered that concussion. But, yeah, taking shots and... I don't know if he just gets too into it and just thinks he can take it a bit more. Oh, don't worry about it, like, after. Like, I mean, he's a pro. He knows what he's doing. But sometimes he does go a bit extreme and it makes you think, like, hang on a minute. did like, How much of that did he actually manage to, like, block or obviously take legit? Do you know what I mean? It's It's one of those yeah. things. Um, yeah, he's know, extreme. He took, like... No, sorry, man. Yeah, no, he, he took like three separate moves. He took a reverse suplex off the top rope, right? He took a dirty switching in the face and the ladder shot all in one match. You know what I mean? All in the space of one match. Like, there's only so much he might turn out like Edge, you know, and God forbid that because right about now, you know, I miss Edge. I'm not going to lie, I miss Edge. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. um, and Ziggler's, you know, I, right now, if Ziggler was in the game, I don't know what would be going on because this guy can wrestle. Um, by the way, I don't know if you guys have been watching NXT, but Briley Pierce <laughs> turned up in a wrestling role. If you don't know, Briley Pierce is um, Dolph Ziggler's younger brother. Uh, he turned up uh, on you know, NXT uh, and against Sakamoto. Uh, yeah, that's right, Sakamoto. And he started to try and imitate Ziggler's, one of Ziggler's headstands. And I was just like, and then they said, oh, yeah, it's Dolph Ziggler's younger brother. It's just like, oh, really? The, the sleeper, like, headlock. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's but exactly he's, right. he's his, like, real, real brother, not kayfabe. Yeah. He's his real brother. Jeez. Um, segment five, Tate Limp and Dactyl's backstage. Oh, mate. Uh, mate. <laughs> this is, like, <laughs> this, <laughs> is, this is just, like, the best thing ever. Like, they've transformed Carly into just a comedy character. <laughs> You know, and he is joke. Like um, the one, the week before when he was given the advice, that was amazing. And then this was even better. And on SmackDown, he was even better again. But you know, just this is it. This I'm fine with this for Carly backstage. Mm-hmm. You know, don't wrestle, don't mash him up anymore. It's great. Yeah, uh, it, it, it sounded like the Divas did a really good job. Of, you know, on the mic again. It just looked they looked really fluid. I want to know what was what was um, Carly yamming. Because <laughs> that looked boom. I'm not even going to lie. That did look boom. Um, 
Little did, little did, you know, I probably find out that it's it's not halal, you know, and it's pork because I man don't eat pork, so sorry about that. Um, but yeah, um, again, what what the f was he saying, man? He said, <laughs> he said, I he said I'm a stooge. That's what he said because they said he was gonna what? go back, and he said I'm a stooge because you know he want they wanted to go into the locker room and find out who the secret admirer is. You got that, did you? It just yeah, like yeah, yeah. I, you know me, man. I can understand all these languages. Yeah, man, bilingual. Yeah, exactly. I, I know you speak a little Espanolo. <laughs> exactly. In, I'm working on my um, my Hindi, so I'm just yeah. gonna be able to understand Kali. <laughs> Go true, man. Go true. Um, <laughs> segment six, we saw Shield versus Kofi and the Usos. Um, how good did the Shield look, E2J? I think they all look good in the match, like, to be honest. Um, Shield always look good, I think. Like, they're, whatever they're doing with the Shield, they're just doing it right. I think they know they know what they got with these guys, and they're just doing it right. Just keep them winning. Just keep them winning. I'd, that's, that's what I can say at the moment. Keep them strong and just, and just do it properly. I don't know what it is with WWE. It seems like they can only... They need to... They need to book a few people like this at the moment. Obviously, like Del Rio, Ziggler, and Swagger. They need a bit more looking at when it comes to obviously like the booking and stuff. But with the Shield, man, I can't knock them each week because I know I've, I've got mates and stuff that like obviously don't watch wrestling all the time, but then they watch them, and then especially when the Shield are like messing up Undertaker and stuff, and yeah. they're getting angry that the Undertaker. Who are these guys messing up the Undertaker? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and I like that, man. I like that. It's instant, instant, instant hill. They're over, do you know what I mean? And, yeah, just keep booking them the right way. Yeah. Um, Shugs, I'm going to say one thing and one thing only, and I want you to comment on it. Um, Ambrose Finisher. Yeah, oh, mate, it's just, it is, as you would say, it is horrible, you know? But it's like, I don't even know what it's called. It's like a front-facing DDT or a reverse DDT, but, you know, I like it. It's 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 a good move, and it looks like you know it's a good enough move to put put someone away. And it's one of those moves he could probably do on any anyone. Yeah. You know, which makes it good. You know, it's not one of those moves where you know you won't be able to do it to like Mark Henry. You could do it to you could do it to him. You could do it to Big Show. You could do it to anyone. I think it's yeah. a good finisher. You know, and obviously the spear is being protected. It's one of those moves that seems to like put people away from. Um, Roman Reigns, so then it is just um, Seth Rollins that they've got to get a nice finishing move. Well, he's got the Skywalker, hasn't he? Is that the flying knee? No, no, the Skywalker is like, oh my god, um, it's like he gets them into like a head, like a front headlock, and then does like a backflip and lands on his on his knees. Yeah, Marafu- like acid dropping it sort of thing. Like yeah, yeah. Fight Dudley used to do, and Marafuji does in well, Marafuji does it. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll, have to look, I'll have to look that one up. He did it at the end of his like NX, NXT um, title run. Like when he beat Corey Graves, that's what that's the move that he beat him with. But it's called the Skywalker. Um, but yeah, Rollins, I like when he comes through the crowd and he does the little front flip thing over the barrier. Like it just puts him out there differently to the others. You know, mm. they all got their separate thing. You know, you, you see only the big hear Reese Patcher's headlands on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Too much VO5, fam. Exactly. Too so, much. so glow, mate. Too much soul glow. It looks like Randy Watson. Oh, stop it. <laughs> His name is Randy Watson. Um, segment 7, we saw Cesaro versus Ryder. Right, now, I'm going to go into a rant here, right? Now, a lot of people don't probably know, or uh, hopefully you should know, but people out there in TV land probably don't know that I'm a raster. My dreadlocks are gone. Yeah, fair enough. I'm still a raster. Cesaro, what you did to Kofi Kingston, raster don't like that, fam. You hear that? Rasta don't like that. You can't take a man's dreads and, and tear it out like that. Nah, dread, we don't like them thing. You need to hold that, fam. Anyway, um, on a real, on a real though, I can't knock it. That was a good, you know, there's a good segment for Cesaro. You know, he just dealt with Kofi after losing pull out the dreads, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. Just standard. Uh, it's great that he was booked strong, um, E2J. What did you think of the promo after the match with Ryder? I can't, like again, I can't knock Cesaro, like a guy that can work in ring, can talk on the mic as well. Um, 
obviously they stopped the Yulin, so I hope they're going more serious with him. I I like him. Obviously, I don't know if they're gonna like. Do you think they're gonna? Are they gonna bring anyone out for him? Have they got like a a wild card that they're gonna throw him up against? Um, well, like I said, like um, like you know, a couple of weeks ago, he's he's putting over El Generico in NXT in the next couple of weeks. Um, but I don't know, Shugs, what do you think? Um, I was just nice to see him on the mic, you know. It was sort of like one of those um, CM Punk um, semi-shoot promos because what he was saying, you know, had his, like, grounds in reality as well yeah. as for the character, you know. Because he was saying about, you know, that he is the best wrestler there and, you know, he could beat anyone and he went through all the shows, you know, there's no one better than me. So I was just glad to see him with the mic because when he was doing his... Uh, US title run and he was going to visit in the cities and he was doing his like little video clips it was really good you know mm. so he's if he's got good. time on the mic again I think it's it can only be a good thing for him definitely he's done a few smaller promos like on WWE.com as well like backstage ones after a few uh, losing like his losing streak pretty much and uh, like he was saying like he's better than this no one can like beat him that sort of thing like you could tell he was getting frustrated so coming out now like you said yeah on the mic, he he's doing it. I just I'm looking forward to what they got of him, and I hope they just book him right. We can hope. Yeah, we can hope. Uh, the next segment uh, was Lesnar, Heyman, Triple H, Angle. Um, so again, man, this is what I'm talking about. Like outside angles, like just just something different. Not always in the arena. Not always in the ring. Just someone different. This is what brings the stuff personal. Like, this is what makes feuds really good feuds. When you take it just that bit personally, you turn up at a man's office and you frig it up. That's what you, you know what I mean? You turn up at a man's office, you mess it up, there's going to be retaliations. Just like the Randy Orton Triple H angle back in the day when Triple H went to Randy Orton's um, oh, KP yard. You know what I mean? And he had the says hammer and he was effing up the yard. That is what you do. Like, you know, it makes it, 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 it puts something in us. It, it makes it look real. You know what I mean? And that's the whole point, making it look real. Um, Shugs, what did you think about the, about the you know, the, the whole angle in itself? Um, yeah, I thought it was good. You know, obviously, Heyman took the lead and basically he was like doing a running commentary and he was dropping in some little jokes. He had his like disses. Obviously, against like Killer Kowalski, uh, Andre the Giant, you know, it was just so good. And um, obviously, Lesnar didn't really say much apart from when he, they said about there was no posters of him. And then he was like, "Yeah, I see." And then obviously, he like pushed the guy's face into the table as well. But it's just like when he speaks, he just he doesn't sound like the, that voice shouldn't be coming out of this big massive guy, you know? Yeah, but, he um, sounded. He still said like it wet. Yeah. And um and then when they had an obvious cut in the screen, like when they went into the office, because they must have filmed that on some backstage same lot or something, because that's not Triple H's office. But it was still good when he was started breaking down the office and mashing up his PC, breaking his laptop, you know, smashing everything up. We thought it was really good. Yeah. E2J, um, how do you reckon they should book Lesnar after your Extreme Rules? Well, man, they showed him walk past the rock poster. I was happy mm. with that. So, I don't know, but Lesnar doesn't... doesn't. They don't need to book Lesnar anything other than a monster, always. Even if he loses, do you know what I mean? He still needs to be yeah. a monster. You can you can get the roll-ups on him. I don't know why they don't use roll-ups and, like, wins like that. So, that this this guy looks unstoppable, do you know what I mean? Like, you... you you, you can win the fight, but you, you can't win the war because this guy's going to come into your office. He's going to do all this and that. I think they need to do more of this. They need to do more of this back and forth. Like, I like that Lesnar and Triple H are obviously getting this. It's, it's obviously to do with Heyman. We know this, but yeah. it's getting this, this amount of detail because, like, when they first said about this, I thought, oh, not again. But now they've... It's got me interested just from seeing this, like, open the opening credits, obviously, to rule them walking mm. in there. And then obviously that when they're in the office and they're showing loads of little teasers for little things. Obviously the rock poster, whether it means it, whether anything's going to come of it or not, I don't know. But I like it obviously because of what's on the dirt sheets. Obviously they, there's rumours they want to do rock rock too. So yeah, I like where they're going. I just wish they'd put the same amount of effort into some of the new guys or the the 
the rising stars that they want to get over as they do with this because that's that's right that they did everything right there yeah i mean i'm calling it now like the steve austin booker t angle brock lesnar is going to find triple h and stephanie in the supermarket and it's over in the milk section the milk aisle dairy aisle is over f5 into the into the um into the uh, cocoa pops and it's all over um next segment we saw Caitlin Funkadactyls versus AJ and the Bellas. <laughs> Why does AJ always look like she gets dealt with by this spear, man? It's just, she looks like she gets... Shugs, man, your girl's getting broken in half, man. What's that all about, man? Jeez, what did you think of the match anyway, Shugs? Um, yeah, I thought it was a good match. It made, like, I don't know, like the Funkadactyls and Caitlin, you know, were good. And I think it's like it makes the Bella Twins look like a good heel team. Because they just were like, bun this, we're going, like, you know, go and get her nails done, go get her weaves did, um, <laughs> you know, and they just went and, like, obviously left AJ to get mash up. But I still think that it's um, only going to be AJ wins at um, Extreme Rules, whatever yeah. type of match they are, AJ's going to yeah. get the win. So they're pushing Caitlin and they're making the look like as if there's no way AJ can beat her, but I think AJ's going to get the win at um, Extreme Rules. Yeah. I mean, I'm calling it next week again. Caitlin, power bombing AJ off the top of the top rope. Bam, there you go. Um, segment 10, Mark Henry promo. E2J, it, didn't Mark Henry control the crowd well, don't you think? I think he always does. I think he always does. Because, because he's not necessarily like, over, over loud. Mm-hmm. Jake the Snake used to do it. Talk quiet and the crowd's got to listen to you. And like you, you can you can shout a little bit and you do that. But I think yeah, like you said, he controls the crowd quite well, and people are realizing that he ain't he ain't nothing to mess with, and yeah, that's what he, he does. That's what you do. Do you can you ETJ? Can you see him with the strap? Can you see him with the WWE yes, title? Yes, and I want to see him with the title. I want to please. Like I'm, I'm just happy that they gave him the world title on because for me they did that right. Um, I want to see. I just want to see. I think if they did if they did the swerve and they gave it to someone like that, him or Ryback, um, I think that him and Ryback would definitely have a good feud because it's almost like set up like those two need to go at it again. Do you know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. the, the problem is Cena, but um, with Mark Henry and if they just gave him the chance, he could run with it and he could make it work. Well, this like kind of moves swiftly into you know segment eleven, which was Barrett versus Sheamus because. Uh, Sheamus came out and cut off Mark Henry when he yeah. was spitting a sick, pro- a sick promo. Um, man, why did they put the IC champ in harm's way? Why? What's what's the point? There's so many other jobbers out there that you can put, you know, that you can job out. Why? Why put him in harm's? It just didn't make any sense. But Shugs, Shugs, Mark Henry is a beast. Man, just tell me what happened. Uh, mate, like, so obviously Sheamus went. Uh, with the fake to Mark Henry and then he's like falling off his chair and that was like that that was the first thing and then obviously Sheamus wins the match and then Hen- after he's taken a, a sly bro kick from um, so after he gave it a sly bro kick to Mark Henry I should say on the outside and then he beats Wade Barrett as well and then just Mark Henry just gives him a basically just a whooping you know he had a belt from one of the trainers and then he just absolutely whooped Seamus to pieces. Um, <laughs> tell me a joke. That's what he was saying. Tell me a joke. <laughs> and then the next one, boy, I'm going to whoop you like you stole something. And then I don't hear you. And then he's just like, where you at? Where you at? <laughs> <laughs> just whipping him with a belt, you know? Uh, and I then was, obviously I was... a world's strongest slam on the outside just to finish it off. Oh, man. This, this just, I, I stood up. When I saw this, I stood up. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And he just screamed, this is what I do. Like, why? He is whipping the guy like it was slavery times. So that mm. was just like... They geez, said like um, it was like roots in reverse. <laughs> oh, Man's man. coming like LeVar Burton. Give oh, him the stop strap. It. Give him the strap. Give him the strap already. What? Uh, what what do you, ETJ, what do you think of the, the stipulation? Because it looks like we're going to have a strap match now at, e, uh, at Extreme Rules. Uh, Savio Vega, Steve Austin. I don't know, man. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, yeah. It, I haven't seen that in a while, so I'm I'm happy with that. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's better than, obviously, them having, like, 
doing weights and things like that. I, I mean, yeah, that kind of builds to like what Mark Henry is with his with the strongest man. But yeah, it's something different at the end of the day. And obviously, it can be quite brutal. Obviously, you've seen the pictures of Sheamus. Oh, mate. Oh, he he's, got mashed he's, up. He's destroyed, isn't he? So, I mean, it, on him, it's going to look ten times worse as well than anyone else. But yeah, like he he got he got messed up. I don't I can't see what's going to come out of this angle yet. I really can't. I just. Do you know what I mean? I'm just I'm happy that Mark Henry's doing his thing. Yeah. And I want to see him with the belt. I want to see him with the belt, or at least be getting like pushed. Like I don't know why they don't have faith in these guys, and maybe it's not that. I don't know what what it is, what they're thinking. I I, I can't make the decisions, but I wish I could sometimes. I, I want to see him with the belt. I want to see him with the belt. I might I might have to just pour a little liquor for Sheamus's back. Because <laughs> I'm just saying now, it, it is so, so pale. It looked like he had to have a skin graft. It looked like he's going to have to have a skin graft after those belts. Jeez. Um, segment 12, last segment. Uh, Ryback versus Kane. Um, Shugs, what did you think of the match? Did, did Kane carry Ryback? And if he did, you know, what does that say about Ryback being a main event player? Well, Ryback's a main event player because Vincent Mann likes him, you know? It doesn't mean he's actually a good wrestler. He's improved a lot, but then... When he first started, he was terrible. So, you know, he's just gone up from terrible. But, yeah, this I think this is why they're putting him in with these veterans and these good wrestlers, people who are going to make him look good. Daniel Bryant doesn't really have a bad match with anyone. Um, Kane, the same. He always brings it the best in people. And um, on SmackDown, he fought Chris Jericho, you know. They're, like, three of the top wrestlers or the top workers in the company. And they're the ones they're putting right back with. You know, but he's getting the wins. He's getting the W. So what can you do? Nothing. <laughs> That's what. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, you just um, have to. We just have to take it. We just have to like it. Exactly. Um, E two J. What did you think of the swerve at the end? Uh, I, I see. I liked it. I, I like. I like the whole Ryback rules thing. Like like Sugar was saying, with Ryback though, he's he's in there with with good people you can't really go to speed limit with this guy you have to, to put your foot down and get him over because he can't be he, I can't see Ryback being a half-assed guy obviously <clears throat> with with the shield and everything they're over as well so they you he, these guys can work off of each other do you know what I mean I like that that obviously seen as music hit came out obviously standing with like like Brian helping Kane and I wanted this last week really Mm-hmm. Um, I like the finish. Um, obviously he got he got dealt with. He well he dealt with he dealt with Cena. He stands over him, shouting right back rules. It goes off, but I liked how I liked how they did it. I knew something was going to go down at there. I, I at the start I thought it was going to be similar to like past couple of weeks, but it makes sense to what they did. They did obviously the first time you had. Uh, Cena standing outside. Then you have Ryback standing outside because he's not going to wrestle and he just stands on the stage. Didn't get a pop. But this week I thought it was better. I did think it was better, a lot better, and added a bit more to it. Um, yeah, I don't think it hurt the show either. Um, I just think that they need something a bit more with Ryback and Cena rather than just oh end of the show that those two are fighting again. Next episode, yeah. next episode of the rule, what's, what's it going to be? I think there needs to be like an edge, like, oh, I, how is he going to come back from that? Or how is the other guy going to come back from that? Something to something to build it, do you know what I mean? A bit a bit more, just escalate the situation. Yeah, because personally, personally I, don't, I, I don't really care about this match. Like, at first I was a bit like, oh, yeah. But now I'm like, what, what's the payoff? There's no, it's like, nothing, it doesn't look good at all. It doesn't even look like it's interesting. Yeah. You know, it just it just seems like it would be like back in the day, John Cena filler match against Omaga. It just looked, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean. Rest rest in peace, Omaga. Um, yeah, it just the thing is, I, I months ago I was saying I can't wait to see like a right right back versus Cena match. You know what I mean? Like, but I just they, I don't think they booked it right at all. And that, the trouble is with that is they make Cena Superman. If you start hurting Cena and making him lose and stuff like losing to the Rock and everything like that, I think that's the best thing that's happened in ages. But oh, why yeah. can't they? Why can't they keep keep the flow of things with Ryback? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Um, right, so that was the end of Raw, people. Um, we're gonna go right now into SmackDown in sixty seconds. Roll with it, Shooks.
Okay, so SmackDown in 60 seconds. Start off the highlight reel. Jericho in the ring. Calls it right back. And his delivery is just more annoying on SmackDown for some reason. He had beef. Teddy Long comes out and makes a match. And right back hits Jericho from behind. Um, that's it. They're going to fight for the, in the main event of SmackDown. Second match, Kofi versus Cody. And now the jobber becomes the jobbed. And Kofi is winning, and just Cody, poor Cody. I just put a sad face, I put a, a sad smiley, that's it, poor Cody. Um, Zeb, backstage, good promo with um, Renee Young. He didn't get attacked, but, you know, he dissed her, which was great. Um, Big E versus Swagger with Del Rio on commentary. So before the match, Del Rio puts a ladder into the ring to stir things up. The match never gets started. Dolph gets kicked in the head and has a concussion and the whole way through the match he looks like he's been smoking in the car with Swagger on the way to the show. <laughs> um, Brian versus Ambrose and the internet wrestling community collectively jizz in their pants seeing these two in the same <laughs> ring. Um, but yeah, a great match and somehow Kofi Kingston's turned it to John Cena because he runs down <laughs> to even up the numbers game and they clear the ring and play Kofi Kingston's music at the end and I'm like what fucking dimension has I been transferred where Kofi Kingston is clearing the ring for the shield outside in the car park Mark Henry pulls not one truck but two trucks and he pulls these trucks to break the world record and then basically passes it on the floor and is just like a mess but these were some big trucks um, big show against Sweet Tea Sweet T's got some new ring attire for some reason. Quick KO. Then he attacks Brodus before Randy Orton comes out. RKO. Orton's does his pose. Um, Caitlin and AJ and Natalia backstage. Bit of banter between Caitlin and AJ. And then she disses um, Caitlin and Natalia by saying later gentlemen, which I pop for. And then Detective Carly comes out in a Rey Mysterio mask saying... Boudica, Boudica, 619. <laughs> okay. And then uh, the last match is Jericho against Ryback. Uh, Jericho makes Ryback look good. Ryback DQ for throwing him to the ring post. Then he leaves and comes back and a meat hook clothesline over the next table for the end of show. Fade the black. Okay. Sounded like a pretty de decent, you know, smackdown. Um, I got I, I got to go and watch Ambrose against um, Ambrose against Brian. Jeez, you ain't the only yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, and just hold hold off on the jizz, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, all right, people, you you about to listen to the best segment because you're about to get stunned with Shook Stunners. All right, Shook Stunners. Um, so we had a weak Raw, um, a decent SmackDown. So jobber of the week has to be Cody Rhodes. God bless his mustache. Um, I don't know why uh, they seem to be putting a bit of a push under uh, his tag team partner Sande although he lost to Orton he's getting some TV time but uh, Cody's just jobbing out straight jobbing and that's it and then what is the next one move of the week move, move, yep. move of the week it's got to be Mark Henry he's moving and he's either once he got that strap that's the move the beat down <laughs> Strap the beat down to um, Sheamus, and that moves into rest of the week, which is the same. The world's strongest man, sexual chocolate, Mark Henry. Yeah. He, wasn't, he wasn't involved in a match in two shows, but he was the rest of the week for his beat down and pulling those trucks. You got a, was, apparently, you got a pop as well, isn't it? Pulling it after pop, pulling yeah, the trucks. If it was real, um, then you know, pff, this guy's too strong. He's a beast. He's an absolute beast. Um, all right. Well, that's the end of the show, guys. Just want to give a quick shout out for people. You need to read uh, Hardcore Holly's new autobiography. Seriously, it you think is our listeners controversial. Can read? Or hopefully, uh, hopefully, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, most of them get the show on YouTube or whatever. So you know, I don't know how many YouTube readers, watchers can read. Yeah. Well. Buy maybe, it. Maybe if, get, maybe if he's got an audio book, let's recommend them the <laughs> audio book. The audio book. Man, just go on Amazon and buy the thing. <laughs> what do you, man? Take your hand out your pocket. Uh, God damn. 
the, it, the autobiography is sick anyway. He goes in on everyone, on everyone, literally. He don't care. He's going in on everyone. He mentions Mark Henry in a good way, but he mentions other people, you know. Yeah, you, Simon Dean, I see you on Twitter on some hating thing. Bun them haters. You did what you did. You know what you did. You got slewed in the autobiography. Simple as. Um, right, so people, next week is the go-home show for Extreme Rules. Um, we're going to have our predictions um, as well as we're going to be joined by a very, very special guest, our biggest supporter from across the pond, that's right in America, the lovely and talented Sierra from the Angry Marks podcast. So, guys, as usual, follow us on Twitter. It's at Sunday Segway. Read the blog, sundaysegway.blogspot.co.uk. Email us, sundaysegway at gmail.com. Listen to us on YouTube, iTunes, Podomatic, and obviously the Double Twist player. You know what to do. Download it on mobile, Double Twist, all day, every day, in your face. End of story. Um, so I'm going to end it with, in the words of Bobby Heenan this week, you always kick a man when he's down because it's easier for him to get kicked. Standard. Right. <laughs> I'm going to see you guys next week, yeah? Peace out, peace out. There's man. Okay, peace out.